Hello everyone! Today, we're putting the main characters aside, for we are talking about support, which also concerns you, so I'll come back. In Limbo's Company! I did have two types of passives. One combat passive, also just called passive, which activates for the ID when on the field, and another one when it's on the bench, called support, which activates when certain conditions are met for some of the IDs on the field, granting them additional benefits. So this video will focus on the latter, analyzing how they are done, what types there are, the conditions, as well as which are more relevant on each sinner, and how we can constitute an ice bench. It will take into account all IDs released before the murder on the Warp Express event, not included. A note that with a new type of chain battles, which substitutes field members by backup ones when dead, if you want to exploit it, it might enter in conflict with a more appropriate bench. But let's not worry too much about that for now. So let's start by checking how a support passive works. Both types of passives activate when the scene conditions are met, which are either res, which requires a certain number of resonance of the corresponding scene on the chain to activate, or owned, which activates the passive once you have at least a certain number of the corresponding scene in your scene gauge, not consuming them. As a quick example, Grip Faust passive requires a resonance of at least 4 lust skills on the chain to activate for the turn. Meanwhile, Liu Anglu's passive requires 4 RAS resources to be honed to activate. Honed passives might seem easier to activate, but that's only if you're only thinking about dungeons or railways, where you keep your scenes between fights. A honed passive cannot be activated on the first turn of a single fight, and depending on your comp, can take several turns to be online, while a resonance passive can be activated from turn 1. However, as long as you have the scene resources, it will activate, and you happen to gather them naturally, so you don't take extra efforts for having the two use resonance every turn, which you're not even guaranteed to be able to get, or might make you go through some less optimized turns. But in punctual battles, like excavation or story battles, where you have to accumulate resources from zero, you might activate resonance passive faster than owned ones. Also, in regular encounters, where you get more than 6 slots, it's easier to activate resonance as you have more skills to use. But because of the punctuality and difficulty of activating resonance, resonance passives tend to be stronger. For combat passives at least. Now let's get away from the on-field one for the specificity of support ones. First of all, as of this video, every passive is targeted to only one ID. The way the ID is chosen also varies a lot depending on the passive, among a few criteria, mostly HP, SP, and speed. So it can grant the passive to the slowest, to the fastest, the highest max HP, lowest one, lowest HP, lowest HP percent, most SP, etc. Since a patch that happened during Season 3, when multiple IDs meet the conditions at once, the priority is given depending on the deployment order, the one with the lower deployment number getting the passive. Therefore, you can predict who is gonna get it. However, saying you have control over it would be a bit bold. Most of the control you have is during deployment, for the order to prioritize some IDs, and things that shouldn't change during the fight, like max HP. Unless you play Mersault screws well up. Criteria like speed vary a lot in the fight, so you don't have too much control over it, and you are rarely ever gonna build a team just to make sure one of your members is always the fastest or slowest, but you should still care about deployment order a lot, as for example, it's easy, depending on the mode, to have all your IDs at 45 SP, which will make most or least SP targets be the first deployed. So the next question is, what is the impact of those passives? Is it even worth the trouble? Well, short answer is no. Long answer is no. Okay, more seriously. It depends, as usual. Some passives can really help make some characters function, more on that later, while some are so situational that the situation to use them might rarely ever come. On average though, supports offer not necessarily very noticeable, but still very existent buff. However, because they vary as much as the condition for the target, having the right one go to the one you want is not always guaranteed. But to talk more about this, we'll have to get into details about the passives themselves. And so, you like stats? 
because here they come. I've compiled some data about all the passives in a Google Doc, which you can find in the description. So here are a few statistics about them. First of all, there are actually 26 threads support passives for 83 owned ones. Since PM changed the system during season 1 to add own passive, they seem to have mostly switched to them. For comparison, for field passives, there are 39 raised ones and 70 owned. Among them, 15 wrath, 14 lust, 14 sloth, 15 gluttony, 18 gloom, 22 pride, and 11 envy. The average required resonance is rounded up to 3, while the average owned required is of 4.2. There are quite a few different effects, but here is a list of some of them. Four of them grant attack of final power up, four varied buffs, eight influence clash power, three grant damage reduction, five inflict varied debuffs, four haste, six HP heal, three shield, eight SP heal, 34 damage multipliers, which is the bulk of it, and a few unique effects. Archetype wise, four help burn infliction, three bleed with one nails, one tremor, two self tremor and one tremor burst, with one stagger increase, five rupture, plus sink life talisman, only one sinking, with tremor funny enough, five for poise and two help charge. However, I just mentioned the ones helping the infection, but quite a few supports fall into an archetype even without contributing directly to it. As such, there are six burn related supports, seven bleed ones, 11 tremor related ones, as well as two self tremor, nine rupture, three sinking, still sad, 10 poise, and six charge related. Those include debuffs for the archetype, damage increase, or even SP heal. So as you can see, out of the 109 IDs presented right now, half of them have support directed towards archetypes. There are also damage increase supports for the three main physical types, seven for blunt, six for pierce, and three for slash. There are a few other newer archetypes that don't have many supports, like negative statuses in general, but there's not much synergy for them right now. Also, some supports can have some added conditions, either for the wall support to activate, like killing an enemy, which concerns nine passives, or to activate a part of it, like being from a certain faction, like for Sank, Seven, or Encorp. Some can also require conditions like being under a certain HP threshold or having the target fulfilling certain conditions. As you can see, there are a lot of different types of passive and therefore it's hard to make a general rule for them. However, seeing as some of them can be very similar, especially among the plain damage boosting ones, I tend to give most of the passives a medium value of 10% power increase without other conditions, a lot of them going to 20% with some conditions. So the question is, how do we make a good bench? Well, it depends on what you need. The first thing to do is to build your team, and then you choose support passives among the remaining sinners, not the opposite. Most of the time, since a lot of passives are for archetypes, if you're playing one, you'd likely want those for your archetypes. Some can have special uses and be good in specific situations, but I'll mention that later. In general though, if you don't play an archetype, you're most likely better off going for damage as it's the most generally useful thing. Killing your enemies faster, that is. Some stuff like debuffs can also help with that. Damage reduction can also help if you can't increase your damage. Ultimately, just fill with what you can. Not all sinners have good supports, and you might have trouble finding some because none of them helps, but that happens. Supports also require scenes to function, so you also need to make sure you can activate them, either by having enough scenes or if you can activate the appropriate resonance. So now I'm gonna get into details about the more interesting supports for each sinners. I won't talk about all of them, and I'll mainly focus on the ones that have known uses, or that can make an actual difference in a bench. So let's go in order and start with the first sinner, Yi Sang. He has several interesting passives, starting with his base ID. His base ID's support heals SP to the ally with a list of them, so often the one you wanna heal, if they've lost SP this turn. This is good in general, especially after an ego use, or for the egos that consume SP over time, but it's also a very good support for Don Sinclair, as it will replenish some of the SP lost each turn in ego form. The Quad Sang support is really good for IDs with Poison Bleed, 
and you'd want him as a support for Pico Discreef if you intend to play Bleed, if you're not playing Ringy Sang. Speaking of this ID, it has one of the best SP heal support in the game, able to heal up to 18 SP in the right conditions, aka 3 negative effects on the target, including Bleed. This has insane synergy with Ishmael's wing beat if you want to pull off the funny combo. Last but not least, his BLID still is one of the few increasing poise count gain from skills, which is always very helpful for poise IDs. For both him and Pequod, you don't need a full team of poise and can just target the one you want by deploying it first. For Faust, there's not too many impactful supports. In the two stars, the most notable is Butler Faust helping sinking teams regenerate SP and also combos with Wingbeat if you wanted to. In the three stars, the most known one is Grip Faust, who can generate quite a bit of SP to one target as long as you have three Lust Res. This can help in giving a jump start in SP if you can trigger the Lust Resonance. It also gives Fanatic to Encorpalize, but if you play Encorp, you'd rather have her on the field. I wanna mention Regret Faust's support, who can help clashing against enemies with enough negative effects, which is not the hardest to apply, especially against bosses. Also a mention for 7 Faust having the longest support passive in the game. Dawn's most known support is probably our BL1, which can greatly help poise IDs getting potency. A note that since it targets the ally with the least poise, for IDs that have too much trouble getting it or don't need it particularly, it might target them instead of the ones you'd want. Other than that, W Dawn's support grants a plus one power to the fastest ally if you get 3 Gloom Res, which is always a strong buff. Most other IDs are simple but effective damage increase, but I want to mention Lantern, enabling tanks to heal quite a bit if they can hit their attacker, and Sangdon's passive which can get some nice damage in fast teams. Reassure's supports vary quite a bit. Her base one is the only resonance based one, but can increase damage by 20%, just don't get hit. Her 7 ID is good for rupture infliction, as is Kurokumo for bleed, as they plainly increase it. In fights with multiple targets, her Chef ID's support is great for healing by killing enemies each turn, like against Ambling Pearl Slimes. Her CCB's support helps specifically Twin Hook Gregor, but I have to mention the interaction with Bullet Otis, as using her skill 3 with 7 ammo does count as using the last ammo, as you're consuming all of them, making high damage, but you're unlikely to get to that most of the time. The last two mentions are pretty important, as your DV Yoshio support helps all self tremor IDs get their tremor count faster, which can be very relevant for IDs like Spice Bush Yisang or your DV on glue. Meanwhile, Butler Yoshio helps allies with poise count, as well as giving them haste, helping both poise IDs and ones that want to be faster, be it for strengths or setups, like LCCB Ishmael or R Corp is Cliff. For Mersault, several of his supports are useful, like for burn or rupture infliction being flat increase. His base ID is just a flat damage reduction for another tank. Of note would be his middle ID, which can serve as a constant SP heal for most IDs if you have two of the same faction, which is often the case, as well as BL increasing allies crits. Finally, his DHE ID is specifically made to help all your DHE tanks, mostly Rogian at the moment. Angulus base passive is already nice, offering a constant SP heal for the allies with the least SP every turn. His Kurokumo and Liu IDs are also very good for both bleed and burn by increasing infection. Otherwise, his most used passive is probably his Ting Tang ID support, granting 20% damage increase on head hit, which you are expecting to roll most of the time when doing damage anyway, making it very close to a direct 20% damage increase. A mention for Keiko's passive granting 2 ampules, which helps a lot with HP regeneration, but is also the most dangerous passive in the game. This cliff has some support just increasing damage under conditions, which are generally good when relying on own scenes, with Pequod being dangerous but rewarding. Of note, his Encore passive is great for other Encore allies that inflict nails constantly, notably Grip Faust. Seven helps with Rupture Infliction, but is more restricted than other status infliction supports, having to hit with a fatal weakness. The biggest mention is Sunshower's passive, which is made to help Encorp Sinclair, especially with both SP loss and blunt damage increase, and can help if new minus coin IDs come. An addendum for the new Ace Cliff ID who increases max charge count, which has one specific use of being able to make Don use electric screaming with 20 charge without having to have another slot, as well as help the newer charge IDs and egos.
Ishmael's passives are overall too restricted and might not always fit your team. Most are archetypes related and or blunt, but good under those conditions, with Captain giving quite a bit of poison kill, all EU and R Corp giving good blunt damage increase, the latter being more general, not requiring other conditions. Among the three others, I have to mention Shi Ishmael, who increases counter skill final power, which does include some strong ones like Middle Dawns or Bielmer Souls to claim their bones. Rodion's base support is almost the same as Ting Tang on Glue, also being a very good damage increase, but for the highest max HP ID this time. Most of our other ID's passives aren't as useful though, being mostly too inconvenient to activate. Of note are probably Kurokumo and Liu for damage increase for Slash and Pierce under Burn, Rose Spawner for Stagger Threshold increase on Tremor Burst, but the biggest one would be Yechi Rodion, who can give up to 3 blunt damage up to the highest max HP ally when taking 15% of the HP as damage, including shield. This can be a big increase for a blunt tank or bruiser who is gonna take hits, like Eastcliff Sunshower, Middle Dawn, or Yechi Mersault. Sinclair has some good support, with BL offering 1 attack power up on Pride Rez, and Mariachi 10% damage against lower SP enemies, so usually most of them. Other than that, Zvi helps tanking for the least HP ally, so the one you don't want to be hit though, but also the one closest to dying, and Molar helps directly increasing Tremor Infliction. Technically, Red Sheet helps by granting Talisman, which increases Rupture Infliction, however it will always be over 6 and will cause self-damage. I'll also mention Encorp's passive helping back Sunshower is cleave by increasing damage, Sinclair's, which is specially made for Syncotis or Evade tanks to get faster and redirect clashes, and down support for being just worse than long lose by being res and limited. Oti's base ID support can help dealing high damage against low SP enemies already. G Corp is random, but can be a random attack power up on a known passive, so it's a nice buff, protection also being okay. Sank is especially good for Sinclair to increase both clash and damage. Otherwise, most others have overall harder conditions for their effects, with the exception of Molarotis, which helps with self tremor IDs in the same way as Eurodb Ratio. I guess I'll mention 7 Otis, which is a 10% damage increase on weak or fatal targets, so what you want to go for with your damage dealer most of the time or against staggered enemies. Finally, for Gregor, all his passives are honed ones, and he is mostly known as the healer with his base ID, Sushef, and G-Corp healing HP. His base ID is better in general, unless you're clashing a lot, but it might depend on your scene resources as well. Otherwise, Leo Gregor helps with skills like Rip Space or Quick Suppression with a higher number of coins, as well as Wingbeat. Rose Banner helps rupture infliction if target has Tremor, which is not the hardest to do, even if a bit weird and just more conditional than others. I mentioned Air Gregor's passive, which helps Sun Shower is Cliff mostly, and can be of use for IDs with high gloom damage in exchange for XP. Okay, so now that we've highlighted which passives can be used or are useful, let's try some examples. We're gonna take some compositions, and we will try to make their more optimal bench out of the options we have now. This will go into slight notions of team building and slightly bigger notions of deployment order as they impact support targeting. So let's take this example first. This is my result of a bleed team focused around Ring Sang and Nails with Grip Faust. So let's get to the first point, and also the reason why Twin Hook Gregor is in this team. He can inflict quite a bit of bleed potency, but needs to build up poise. And that's why one of the main supports I wanted to use was Butler Yoshu to increase his poise count, which also makes him the last deployed unit. Then, as I wanted to play Nails with both Faust and Dawn, one support choice was Encorpice Cliff increasing the Nail Infection. Faust and Dawn ended up being 1 and 2 in deployment order because of Faust's passive, but since if Cliff's passive targets the fastest, it doesn't matter too much. Then, in the obvious support that can help us with bleed, Kurukumong Lu's support is an easy choice. After that, it's pretty much filler, since there's not much more bleed support left, SCB Rodion for easy damage, then R Corp Ishmael, since it is the only usable one, for 4 skill 3. Only other option being base ID if you get under 50% HP, which I'd rather not. Lastly, Sinclair's Vi damage reduction, a bit by default, though Mariachi could have been a pick. BL wouldn't, because activating 3 Pride Rays is not possible here. That's how I would do the bench for this comp. 
Now let's get another example, easier this time. A full Tremor team brought by the new IDs. For a bench this time, since almost every sinner has a Tremor ID, bringing all Tremor IDs in the bench is just the safest choice. Only exception is Gregor, but he can just take healing duty as usual. Now for a third archetype. Let's try with the new charge comps. Some things might feel counterintuitive here, the first being that W Corp Mersol does not benefit this comp that much in terms of passive, as they don't rely on Rupture for damage. This could add with Yisang, but overall I prefer putting in Middle Mersol, who is sure to bring support. Then while making the comp, I chose to keep Yisang in for sins, damage and utility, and also because Anglu's support is good in this team. However, they can be reversed, even if W Gisang's support might not be the fittest. Then our cop Ishmael is good for increasing Faust's damage, and afterwards we found the 3 usual IDs by default for lack of better option. Lastly, I have a last example that's quite peculiar. Here comes... Potential Man. That's right, Solo. So while they've been hiding battles where it's mandatory to have more than one sinner, or that one sinner cannot get multiple slots, solo fights is still something that people can do in most battles. And one thing to mention when doing a solo run is that all passives will go to the solo unit, which, by stacking all of them, can greatly increase in strength. So here for potential men, we first have to give him Hair Gregor's and Encorp Sinclair's support, for they are made for him. Next, because he's a blunt bruiser unit, Support from Middle Dawn and Yechi Rodion can increase its damage output as he is taking damage, though once again LCB Rodion is a good choice, as well as Ishmael for Blunt in general. You can also chain Gloom, so W Dawn might be easier to proc than Middle Dawn. Then Zvi Faust can increase his resistance with defense level ups, as well as Mersol's plane damage reduction. Then Molai Sang can help, since he bursts Tremor on skill 2, and there is not really other useful supports. One thing to take into account in general, but in this case in particular, is your access to only limited scenes, so there are supports you might not be able to activate at all. Which is why Anglu and Ryoshu have no appropriate support for him, or for Anglu, the ones he can activate are mostly SP gains, which you might not want in this case. So I put Chef Ryoshu for heal if you're playing MD and get the scenes, and you already be Anglu for a chance at a fun double tremor burst. I also have to mention that solo fights with Sunclave tend to get a lot of corrosions, which will drain your C engage. So passives based on Gloom might not activate if you're constantly corroding with Binds, for example, which allows Molai Sang passive to be useful. So that's it for the examples. As you can see, there are several ways to do a bench, but a few IDs still come often, mostly by default. However, don't worry too much about making a perfect bench. Most of the supports don't influence the game that much. However, some can be pretty useful, many including the SP and HP heal ones, and some even help a lot specific cases, like the LD Sang's Poise Count gain, or his base ID SP heal for Dawn Sinclair. So even if you're not making a full bench, as it can sometimes be tedious to check all of them, there are some that you should still check out to make some IDs work more properly. So with time, as new IDs come out, some supports might suddenly come handy. Well, I doubt all can. But well, with the introduction of chain models, maybe there'll be a point where some support is gonna be sent first to be sacrificed. Oh yes, I know some ideas I'd love to sacrifice. For the king! And that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Final message, with the murder on the Warp Express event happening, next Limbus video will probably be the next Valpurgis Nacht, unless something comes up. I have some plans for animated story videos, so I'll try to do them at some point. But I'll keep weekly updates to inform you, so subscribe and check the community tab for news. In any case, see you next time, and keep your sanity high in this slow descent into the inferno.